a lot of comments uh, from various points of views, and I'm not going to reiterate um, the uh, the gentleman from um, 33, as well as 80, as well as the gentleman from LaRue and Todd. But they made some very good points. But I want to uh, make a point that uh, there's several points uh, that's been referenced by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. One is about the disaster. What are we going to do about disaster recovery and so forth? Well, if I recall, we had a special session or we had a session to go through and we pulled money from the budget reserve count to help pay for that. So when you sit there and point uh, to those particular items, be very mindful of the historical perspective that we've gone through to put ourselves in a better position in order to pay for those things in case those things do come up. I do want to ask a question, though, and it's more rhetorical, but I'd love to hear arguments, maybe not in this, not in this format, but maybe individually, is like, when we do reach to one or zero percent of income tax, what's your arguments? What are you gonna, t what are you gonna say to us in terms of where the money's gonna be saved? Because right now, $50,000, which is used in the past, that's a thousand dollars in people's pocket over the past two years. You're looking at $3,000 over n the next uh, couple of years from, fi from 50 down, from, based on $50,000. That's $3,000 more in people's pockets. So when you sit there and go through and make these arguments about a very, very short-term, narrow perspective, and I respect where you're coming from, I, know, I, know, I understand what you're saying, but I think this body, particularly on the majority side, is playing a long-term gain, long-term outlook. It's a, it's a strategy. To, to drive up population because the gentleman is tied and I talked some time ago and he was point on in terms of what what are we uh, in in terms of our competitive states our population is flat I think we grew like maybe three percent this will help drive more people as well as retain people in the Commonwealth of Kentucky so we can grow the revenues we can grow the various other revenue streams that come into that because as a person who who manages a nonprofit and a person who has owned a profit oriented uh, company I hear time in and time out it's what is going to be an impact in my in my pocket that's how I bring people in from out of the state that's how I keep people you know in my in my company in the past as well as a nonprofit that I manage is making sure that we hit your the money in your pocket for so you can to take it and spend it, invest it, or save it. Those are three options. That's not any different than what we're doing here in the General Assembly in terms of the budget. We're looking at spending, we're looking at investing, and we're looking at saving. And we're doing a pretty daggum good job and thinking of doing that and looking at a long-term game, you have got to be mindful of it. So if there's any other arguments you have, once we get down to one or zero percent, let me know what your arguments are in terms of trying to help those who are least, uh, least among us. Because that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. It's exactly what we're trying to do because you know what? I service quite a few people that have twenty to $30,000, if that, that come to my nonprofit agency or nonprofit for, the, uh, for mental health. And let me tell you something. I feel it and I see it. So be mindful that some of us on the other side of the aisle are very keen on understanding of what it means in terms of helping people out to bring them up into a better, into a better uh, lifestyle. And by driving your income tax down to zero, that's one mechanism to do it. And there's other to do that. So please be mindful. And if you have any other arguments, once we get down to zero, let me know. I'd be more than happy to sit down with you individually and talk to you about that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.